the more we talk about it, the more the discussion expands. Interestingly, the more the discussion expands, the more exciting it gets. Once again, I'm talking about Qiyamul Layl. In this final episode of the Qiyamul Layl series, we are highlighting six undermined facts about the best prayer after the prescribed prayers. Qiyamul Layl. So get your cup of coffee or tea and let's do this. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. This is part four of the Qiyamul Layl series of videos of the good news brought to you by gsalam.net and Al Bushra by gsalam. In part one, we covered nine reasons you should start your Qiyamul Layl right away or take it more seriously to be consistent with it. Part two came with eight practices that enhance your Qiyamul Layl habits by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part three shed light on some seven misconceptions related to Qiyamul Layl. Today in part four, we are learning six undermined facts about Qiyamul Layl. Without further ado, let's unveil the first undermined fact of Qiyamul Layl, and that is preserving the Qiyamul Layl chain. Imagine yourself in your daily or weekly work routine. You have been working for the past 10 years or so. Monday to Friday. Friday is the most tiring day of the week for you, and Monday is the day you go to work afresh. However, it is easy to go to work on Friday than it is to go to work on Monday. This is simply because even though you are tired on Friday, you go to work the day before Friday and a few days before Friday and the day before it. On the other hand, even though you are fresh on Mondays, you have to drag your feet to go to work. And it is very easy to be absent to work on Mondays than it is on Fridays. The reason is simply because you need to gather and collect yourself more on Mondays because the chain that connected the previous Monday to Friday was disrupted by the weekend that fell in between. Therefore, you suffer what is called Monday blues. Now, let's simplify this point. If you wake up for Qiyamul Layl tonight, inshallah, the likelihood of you waking up tomorrow night for Qiyamul Layl is very high by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is simply because you have created the first knot of the chain, which means two consecutive days are likely to lead to three and three will likely lead to four, and four to five, and so on. Likewise, even if you create a chain of seven consecutive days, if you take a break for a day, that is where you will need to intensify your intention and also refresh your motivation to be able to pick up yourself out of the bed and then go out for your Qiyamu al-Layl. In other words, if you miss your Qiyamul Layl tonight, the likelihood of you missing it tomorrow night is also high. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid that from happening. And that is simply because you have created the first hole or break in the, in the chain. Therefore, two consecutive days of missing Qiyamul Layl are likely to lead to three and three may lead to four and four to five and so on. Now that we are clear on the importance of preserving the Qiyamul Layl chain, let's move on to our second undermined fact about Qiyamul Layl, and that is beware of the five minutes. I do believe that having an alarm clock to help us wake up for Qiyamul Layl works, sometimes for some people. However, I find it important to emphasize that you are likely to miss your Qiyamul Layl because of your alarm clock or the alarm app on your mobile phone. This is because oftentimes we prepare and intend to wake up for Qiyamul Layl, but we end up falling for the trap of snoozing for five minutes. That five minutes. You know what I mean. So beware of that five minutes. 
don't break your chain which you have just been preserving with that five minutes. Yes, it is only five minutes, but the loss is worth 50,000 boxes of gold. It is just five minutes, but it can make your whole day sluggish, rendering you unproductive. Moving on, can we simply skip Qiyamul Layl simply because we did our Insha and Subuh prayers in Jama'ah? It is important to emphasize that no matter how consistent one evolves in his Qiyamul Layl, his mindfulness about the prescribed prayers should have the highest priority in his mind. In fact, one of the objectives of developing a habit for Qiyamul Layl is that it helps you to be punctual and consistent with your obligatory and prescribed prayers. I think we have touched on a bit on this in part one of this series. Please do check it out here. Now, despite the fact that Qiyamul Layl falls short in priority and significance when compared, of course, with any of the prescribed prayers, Qiyamul Layl remains the most significant after the prescribed. So significant that Rasulullah used it to encourage the believing folks among his companions to observe and share prayers as well as subuh prayers in congregation. Imam Muslim reports from the narration of Sayyiduna Uthman ibn Affan anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Man salla al-isha'a fi jama'ah, faki'annama qama nisf al-layl. Wa man salla al-subha fi jama'ah, faki'annama salla al-layla kulla. Whoever observes Isha'a prayers in a congregation, it is as if he has spent half of the night in prayers. And whoever observes subuh prayers in a congregation, it is as if he has spent the whole night in prayers. With this, we understand that praying Isha in Jama'ah as well as praying Subuh in Jama'ah doesn't override the need to wake up for Qiyamul Layl. In other words, even if you observe your Isha and Subuh prayers in Jama'ah and then get the rewards of full Qiyamul Layl, you don't get the experience of Qiyamul Layl as per se you will still lack the physical and the emotional benefits of Qiyamu al-Layl. Therefore, your best bet is pray your Isha and Subuh in Jama'ah and on top of that, wake up for Qiyamu layl To boost your motivation for this, remember that all the ones whom the Prophet wasallam encouraged to wake up for Qiyamu layl were individuals who observed their Isha as well as their Subuh prayers in Jama'ah. Yet, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam invited them to Qiyamul Layl. We have discussed all this in the previous episodes, so do check them out in the description below. Now, here is some good news for our mothers, wives, sisters, and daughters. In part 3 of this Qiyamul Layl series, we have learned that our mothers, wives, sisters, and daughters who have developed the good habit of Qiyamul Layl are free to rest at night when they happen to be in their monthly holiday, since they cannot pray. Yet, they will still accumulate the rewards for it, as if they have woken up for, for Qiyamul Layl. This is understood from the saying of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as reported by Imam al-Bukhari from the narration of Sayyiduna Abu Musa al-Ash'ari. إِذَا مَرِضَ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ سَافَرْ كُتِبَ لَهُ مِنَ الْعَمَلِ مَا كَانَ يَعْمَلُ وَهُوَ صَحِيحٌ مُقِيمٌ When the servant of Allah falls sick or goes on a trip, he will be entitled to the rewards of the good deeds he is accustomed to do when he is well or at home. This is in addition to the fact that if she wakes up and makes dhikr or makes istighfar and seeks Allah's forgiveness, as we have learned in part 3, her sins will be forgiven. And if she supplicates, her supplications will be answered accordingly. And now our next 
And the mind fact of Qiyam layl is taking shower before that Qiyam layl As we know, one has to take wudu, ablution, before he can pray. In fact, he may need to take spiritual bath, janaba, before he can actually pray. And you are likely to find yourself in either of the above scenarios or situations. So take your wudu if you don't need janaba. Or take janaba and that will automatically include wudu. If you need janaba, this section is therefore not necessary for you as it is covered automatically. Meaning, you will still have to take your shower anyways. However, if you don't need janaba, that is where you need this section. And that is, take that shower before your qiyamul layl. It is proven that when you take shower after waking up or when you feel lazy, you become awake and get energetic. And this will be in favor of a focused qiyamul layl. Having said that, you will want to consider this taking shower only if you don't have water scarcity. Now, whether you have taken that shower or janaba or you have simply taken your wudu, the next undermined fact is to dress up for your qiyamul layl. Yes, that's right. Dress up for your qiyamul layl. And dressing up for your Qiyamul Layl comes in two parts. To dress up by ensuring the cleanliness and beauty of one's clothes for Qiyamul Layl, as well as to dress up by ensuring the cleanliness of his Qiyamul Layl praying mat, 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 as well as his praying space. If not for anything at all, then it is for the fact that you are having a special meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at a time when he is showering you with the best of blessings of his subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing to consider when we dress up for Qiyamul Layl is to wear perfume. Obviously, this is to show respect and show passion for, this, for that special and highly or daily meeting with the most supreme being. And yes, a woman can also wear perfume to pray if she is at home. On the mention of ensuring the cleanliness and purity of our praying mat as well as our praying space, it is sad to come across a praying mat in a Muslim's home which is difficult to breathe on. It is unfortunate when we make our praying mat the last thing that gets cleaned or replaced in the Muslim home. Now, let's wrap up. Those were some six undermined facts related to Qiyamul Layl. While they relate to Qiyamul Layl, they also relate to almost all aspects of our life. In other words, we can see the abundance of benefit which developing consistency in Qiyamul Layl have on all other aspects of our lives. And all that come secondary to the greatness of the reward you earn yourself and the closeness you get to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With this part four of this Qiyamul Layl series, we have come to the end of this series. Is there any undermined facts about Qiyamul Layl or any related topic for that matter that you would love to see covered here on this channel? If so, please feel free to comment with it below as we may come back with special uh, supplementary episode for Qiyamul Layl, inshaAllah ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us what it takes to overcome our inner evils and the outer devils and be among the community of Qiyamul Layl. If you have followed this video to this point, I hope it has as well as the other three parts of this series. I hope they have inspired you to take your Qiyamul Layl to a whole new level. Feel free to check out gsalam.net for more videos and articles on Qiyamul Layl. And yes, don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And do like, 
share it with your loved ones, and let's be part of the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until our next, I leave you in Allah's protection. See you and see you in Jannah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.